Hello, and thank you for joining us today for this Onc Live Peer Exchange panel discussion on the topic of immunotherapy use in advanced solid tumors. Immuno-oncology is a rapidly evolving field focused on novel immunotherapies, many of which are proving to induce durable responses and improve overall survival in multiple cancers. Important questions center on how best to use immunotherapies that rely on both active and passive mechanisms, including as part of combination therapy. In this OncLive peer exchange discussion, I'll be joined by a panel of experts who will focus on the use of immunotherapies in advanced solid tumors of the lung, bladder, head and neck, kidney, as well as melanoma. My name is Dr. Mark Sosinski, and I'm professor of medicine at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm joined today by Dr. Dean Bajoran, a professor of medicine and a medical oncologist in the Frederick R. Adler Senior Faculty Chair at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Dr. John Haymack, professor and chairman of the Department of Thoracic and Head and Neck Medical Oncology at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And Dr. Howard Kaufman, Associate Director and Chief Surgical Officer at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey in New Brunswick, New Jersey and Jared Weiss, Assistant Professor of Medicine in the Division of Hematology Oncology at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Now let's begin. We've seen a, really a revolution in therapy with the advent of immunotherapies, and I really wanted to start, uh, John, with you and just kind of have you talk us through the um, sort of the immune system and how it relates to cath uh, cancer pathogenesis and, and, and those issues. Yeah. Well, you know, as you mentioned, this is, I think, without question, the most exciting area that's happening in oncology now. And, and we're already seeing a, a revolution in how we treat all these different cancers, including lung cancer that, we, that we're talking about today. The first thing about the immune system is, uh, is it really plays a, a double-edged sword uh, when it comes to cancer. So on one hand, it's been known for a long time when the immune system is overactive and you've got inflammation, inflammation can cause cancer. So for example, people that have a lot of inflammation in their lung are more prone to get cancer or inflammation in their pancreas or liver or other organs. Um, you know, so in that sense, the, the immune system can be pro-cancer uh, forming. Um, but what's really exciting is, is that we're now learning how to harness it to, to fight cancer. And we've known for some time that, that the immune system plays a role in keeping cancer in check. Uh, and evidence for this is we know when people are immunosuppressed. So for example, uh, people with uh, AIDS, uh, well, one of the leading causes of cancer are, are uh, one of the leading causes of death among people that have profound immunosuppression like that are, are cancers that arise uh, when you lose that immune surveillance. Um, you know, we, we've recently reported that it plays a, a key role in preventing tumor metastasis from coming out. So when cancer cells enter the bloodstream, you need the immune system to, to hold them back. And, and in fact, there's good evidence that um, if it wasn't for our immune systems, we would get lots of cancers, and there are little cancers that are being held in check all the time in the body. But what's really exciting that's happened in the last couple of years is we finally have started to figure out how to harness the immune system to fight cancers that are already there. And you know, one, one thing I explain to my patients, and uh, uh, when, when you think about it, any cancer that has grown up to be a cancer that's affecting a patient is one that's already figured out a way to avoid the immune system. Otherwise, it never would have you know, grown to be a, a tumor that the patient is uh, having symptoms from. And so, so the question is, can we figure out ways to uncover the tumor so the immune system can recognize it, stimulate the immune system? You know, there's, there's a variety of different uh, approaches that have, have been taken, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those today. Uh, you know, I'll just give a couple of um, sweeping comments ab about the immune system. The immune system has different arms. There's one we call innate immunity, uh, and then there's adaptive, or what we call acquired immunity. And the acquired immunity, or the adaptive immune uh, system, is really meant to fight pathogens that come in. So when we get a bacterial infection or a viral infection, um, th this is the, the response to that, and the, the key thing about ad adaptive immunity is there's memory. Um, you know, this is, uh, we think about two legs of this, we think about T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes, and they also make things like antibodies uh, that form what we call the humoral arm. So we think of the cellular arm and the humoral arm uh, of the adaptive immune system. 
And really, there's uh, approaches for fighting cancer that use all these that you know, try to harness B cells, T cells, uh, antibodies, and, and so forth. You know, the last thing I'll say is the immune system is complicated. You know, like I said, it's got a lot of different parts to it. So this is going to be a, a, something that keeps cancer doctors busy, I think, for years and years to come, is figuring out how to harness it. And we're just uh, touching the tip of the iceberg right now. I, I think much of our understanding of the immune system currently when we were all in medical school, yeah. this was not known at the time. So, H Howard, I want to ask you in terms of the evolution of immunotherapy over the past 30 to 40 years. It re really has been an amazing development of... of yeah, um, well, I think the only word is historic. I, I think that the concept of using the immune system has been around for almost 100 years, if not a little bit longer. But the success that we're seeing now is, is relatively recent. You know, I think it's important to remember that many of the immunotherapy approaches we have, they really manipulate the immune system, but the drug that we're really dealing with is the T cell. And I think the reason that we're seeing the success now is that we really understand some of the basic principles of what regulates T cell activity. And it turns out that it was not only important to understand how we turn on the T cell and stimulate it, but also to understand that cancer's already figured out how to shut it down. And so many of the new approaches, such as the T cell checkpoint inhibitors, are really designed to prevent that turning off of the T cell. And that really opens up the door then for what, what has turned out to be pretty interesting and dramatic immune responses. The other thing that I, that I think has happened is, you know, we used to think of immunotherapy as something that would be useful for melanoma patients, maybe some kidney cancer patients, but not for other cancers. I remember when we used to consider, you know, melanoma the immunogenic tumor, and we would see occasional responses with things like IL-2 and interferon, and even those were thought to occur in a relatively small number of patients. But I think now that we really understand how these T cells are working, I think the real advance has been that this seems to work in many, if not all, types of cancer, and we understand that each cancer may require a sort of different approach. Uh, depending on what's going on within the tumor, within the tumor microenvironment, and other things in, in, within the patient. And I think, as you've alluded to, the, the inflammation concept, I think we now can understand that inflammation can occur in really two flavors. You know, there's kind of a, a good acute inflammation, which can get us a good immune response, but there's kind of a bad um, chronic inflammatory condition that can actually promote tumor growth. And we are now thinking about how to really deal with both sides of that uh, coin. And the prospect for combinations, I think, is what we're all very excited about because it does look like, uh, certainly in the animal models and now in uh, some of the early clinical work, especially in melanoma and uh, as we're going to see this year at ASCO and lung cancer, that when you start combining these agents together, we're beginning to see, you know, much better responses.